both let her out that door. So she shows no signs. You won't, you can't check for hemorrhaging. She's in there. She refuses to have a little check to make sure she's not hemorrhaging. They've done an ultrasound and HCG and it doesn't show that she's been pregnant. On October 9th, 2020, at around noon, 27-year-old Taylor Parker was pulled over by a Texas state trooper in what began as a routine traffic stop. However, the officer was horrified to find a newborn baby with an umbilical cord still hanging out. Taylor claimed that she'd just given birth and needed to be taken to the McCartan Memorial Hospital in Idabel, Oklahoma, less than an hour away. However, when she arrived at the hospital, the hospital staff immediately knows that something is off and quickly calls the Idabel police. But neither the police nor anyone else was prepared for the horror they were about to discover. So it comes out of her stomach and still in the sack. Did you, did you, have, to, did you have to pull the sack apart to get the baby out? Yeah, to pull it open. Uh, turned her over and started smacking her back. So what really happened? And how did Taylor end up with someone else's baby? What happened to the real mother? We'll answer all these and more questions in this shocking case of the woman who cut a baby out of a pregnant mother to murder. Taylor Parker was a mom of two from Texas. By 2019, she had been married and divorced twice and lost custody of her two children. Weeks after her second divorce, she met and started dating a country boy named Wade Griffin. Very early into their relationship, Taylor confided in Wade that she was pregnant, but had unfortunately lost the baby. This sort of brought the two of them closer as Taylor leaned on Wade for support. But as the relationship progressed, Wade began learning things about Taylor and who she really was. She would tell some pretty elaborate lies about her life that would make anyone raise an eyebrow. One time she told Wade that she was due to inherit millions of dollars in oil and gas royalties. Then she claimed her mother, Shauna, whom she referred to as fake Shauna, put out a hit on her and that she would not be safe in her home. Being a gentleman and wanting her safe, Wade allowed her to move into his home, but things quickly escalated from there. Taylor reportedly told Wade that Shauna was hacking into their phones the Mexican mafia was now involved, and there was a gunfight involving the FBI. Yeah, I know. But Wade fell for the lies and even took out a loan on his business after Taylor convinced him to use the money to buy stuff like a side-by-side, -side, a truck, and even cows. Now, when Wade's family and friends first met Taylor, they were completely taken by her. They thought she was sweet, smart, and just a great woman for Wade. However, they quickly began seeing red flags about Taylor and the outlandish stories that she would tell them. Also, it was rather weird that Taylor had lost custody of her two kids. Courts are known to usually side with the mother, so there had to be a good reason why they decided to take the kids away from her. Taylor also had told the family about the royalties that she was set to inherit from her grandfather's oil business. But when Wade started having financial problems and asked her about her inheritance, she said that she was having difficulty getting the money. Wade's family also noticed that Taylor seemed to be more into Wade than he was into her. She wanted things to move fast and would always complain about Wade's lack of affection towards her. However, Wade would later say that their relationship had become an emotional roller coaster. He was not functioning well at work and was depressed and overwhelmed with his mounting debt while waiting on Taylor's promises of reimbursement. Around December 2019, Taylor reportedly bought Wade's mom, Connie, her dream car. But just a few weeks later, Taylor called Wade and told him to have Connie come and drop off the car in the driveway. She claimed that the car had a recall on it and that the dealership would be picking it up. This did not sit well with Connie, and she reportedly told her husband that she would never see the car again. A couple of weeks after returning the vehicle, Connie hadn't heard anything from Taylor about the car, so she went ahead and called the dealership. They told her that there was no recall on the car and that it just hadn't been paid for. Huge surprise there. In March 2020, Taylor announced on social media that she and Wade were expecting a child. But there was just one major issue about this announcement. One of Wade's relatives, Angela Pat, had gotten close with Taylor and she would often vent to her about her relationship issues with Wade and her fear that he would leave her. Also, at one point, Taylor had apparently confided in her that she had a prior hysterectomy. A hysterectomy is a surgery to remove the uterus. 
so how could she be pregnant without a uterus? Angela told Taylor that before telling Wade she was pregnant, she should take another pregnancy test to really confirm that it was true. But Taylor assured her she was really pregnant and told her that this pregnancy was intended by God. Taylor was really excited about her soon-to-be-born baby. She was showing all of her family and friends her sonogram pictures, her test results, and everything relating to the baby. Our sweet girl is measuring two pounds and two ounces today. She is definitely handling everything like a champ. Her measurements came back good, heartbeat running slower than normal since they have put mama on a heart pill. We are scheduled for our full 3D ultrasound on July 30th. And after seeing this sweet face today, I cannot wait. Heart face, hashtag Glancy Gale. She's tiny, but fierce. Wade's mom, Connie, was not convinced that she was pregnant, and it caused a lot of friction between her and her son. Still, she wanted to support her son, and so she attended Wade and Taylor's gender reveal party. During the event, it was announced that the baby would be a girl, and she was given the name Clancy Gale. On July 2nd, Taylor posted about medical appointments for the baby, and the way she made it sound as if she was having some sort of pregnancy issue. However, she later replied to a comment saying that everything was sorted and the baby was going to be okay. In August, she and Wade and her growing baby belly took maternity photos together. But despite all of this, a lot of people continued to be suspicious about Taylor's pregnancy. So was Taylor really pregnant or was she faking it? If so, how did she manage to fool all these people? Finally, September arrived, and this was the month that Taylor and Wade's baby girl was due to arrive. Family and friends got more nervous, and doubts continued to grow. They were kind of expecting the news of a miscarriage. On September 2nd, Wade even made a Facebook comment acknowledging that people did not believe that Taylor was pregnant. Around September 15th, Taylor's ex-husband, Tommy, reportedly sent text messages to Wade multiple times telling him about Taylor's previous hysterectomy. He told him that she was using sonograms from her previous pregnancy and warned him that the hospitals in the area were on high alert in case she attempted to steal a baby. Wade then sent Taylor the screenshots of the messages, and she was really mad saying that Tommy was trying to ruin her life. She insisted she was really pregnant and was about to give birth. Taylor was going through a lot of stress that time and she wanted someone that she could talk and confide in. So she reached out to 22-year-old Reagan Hancock. Taylor was an amateur photographer and had photographed Reagan and her husband Homer's wedding a year earlier. Reagan and Homer loved her work and Reagan even recommended her business on Facebook. Taylor and Reagan had stayed in contact via Facebook, and Reagan was now pregnant with her second baby. Her first daughter, Kinley, was with her ex, but she and Homer were raising her together and were over the moon about the new addition on the way. Reagan had announced on Facebook that her new baby girl, Braxlyn Sage, would be born around November 10th. On September 30th, Taylor went to her doctor's appointment, but she was very upset. She explained that her husband, who was in the military, had died and her mother had canceled her plans to help her. The clinic staff offered to reschedule her appointment and suggested doing a sonogram to make her feel better. Taylor declined the sonogram, which was unusual because most expectant mothers would be excited to see their babies. But what worried the clinical staff even more was seeing Taylor sitting outside the clinic watching other pregnant women coming in and out of the hospital. About a week later, on October 5th, there was still no sign of Taylor's baby, which was a relief to some. Unfortunately, there was a fire at Wade's house, and it turned out to be arson. This caused a lot of problems with power and plumbing. Wade and Taylor went to Connie's house to shower, since they couldn't do it at home. While Wade was in the shower, Taylor told Connie that her planned induction for that day was canceled due to a bomb threat at the hospital. The bomb threat led to the evacuation of the hospital and all planned procedures were canceled. Connie had become skeptical of Taylor's stories and even accused her of making the bomb threat. Then it was Taylor's turn to take a shower. An argument broke out between Connie and Wade. Wade had taken time off work to support Taylor during her pregnancy, but Connie was worried he might lose his job if it turned out Taylor wasn't actually pregnant. She suggested he go back to work and promise to call him if the baby came. Wade, despite his feelings for Taylor, was angry that his own family doubted the pregnancy. On October 8th, Taylor went to her friend Reagan's house. She left for a bit in the morning, but came back with a baby gift and Starbucks. 
After Taylor left, Reagan posted about their visit on Facebook. So glad to see you today. Miss you bunches. Also, thank you for the sweet gift and Starbucks. Then, in the morning of October 9th, Taylor sent Wade to sell hogs to a buyer in Oklahoma that she had previously talked to. The plan was to head to the hospital for the induction once the sale of the hogs was complete. But what Wade didn't know at the time was that the buyer had already backed out of the sale. At 7.22 a.m., after Taylor had finished getting gas and some food at McDonald's, her friend Reagan received a strange text from a number using a Google app. By 8.30 a.m., Reagan's husband, Homer, started receiving weird text messages from Reagan's phone. These texts said things like she wanted to be happy but couldn't, which worried him because it wasn't like Reagan to say such things. He texted her at 8.33 a.m. expressing his love, but Reagan didn't respond. At 9.34 a.m., a neighbor messaged Homer on Facebook telling him that Reagan's puppy had escaped their house. Homer tried calling Reagan at 9.36 a.m., but she didn't answer. Eventually, he left work to check on Reagan and the dog. Reagan's mom, Jessica Brooks, arrived at Reagan's house to check on her. When she entered, she found her 34-week pregnant daughter lying face down in a pool of gore. Jessica called 911 and told the dispatcher that her daughter had been murdered, but she didn't know what had happened. Police quickly arrived at the scene and turned Reagan over, unveiling a gruesome discovery. The baby was missing and Reagan was in an absolutely shocking condition. She had multiple jab wounds and a deep incision around her uterus. What kind of monster would do this to a pregnant woman? What happened to the baby? Police are investigating after a woman was found dead in her home after her unborn child was removed from her womb Friday morning. Police in New Boston, which is about 24 miles west of Texarkana, say they responded around 10.20 in the morning. The woman was found dead inside the home. The child also did not survive. At the hospital, Taylor kept insisting that she had given birth, though she completely refused to let the doctors check her. Nurses said that you weren't going to let the doctor check you to make sure you weren't hemorrhaging or anything. I did an ultrasound. The hemorrhaging is the bleeding. Um, whether you're passing clots or not passing clots, they, it's really good to have you checked for that because I know I was passing massive clots and they were about to start giving me blood. That's why they're wanting to check, to check how, you know, any damage and check to make sure you're not bleeding inside internally. That's why they're wanting to make sure. Well, that's okay, that's fine. I didn't know it was a big deal not to want the guy to do that. And investigators did not waste any time in telling her that they knew she wasn't pregnant and she had had a hysterectomy. I'm just gonna be upfront with you. I've been talking to the DA down in uh, Booty County and they've been working on a case down there and we know that you had a hysterectomy sometime back and that you claimed to be pregnant for a while but it really weren't so we're trying to figure out where this baby came from but you didn't get birth this morning taylor still stuck to her story insisting that the doctor would be able to confirm her pregnancy claim but the truth would soon come out taylor <clears throat> found the woman this morning on the side of the road and her baby has been removed from her body. And then you show up with a baby. And the information on it is, you've had, a, you've had a hysterectomy. There's no way you could have been pregnant. Even though you've been telling people for a while you've been pregnant. That there's no way you could have been pregnant. And, I didn't and, hurt anybody on the side of the road. Well, I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a woman that had her baby removed from her body. Her body's found on the side of the road. I didn't say you did. I just want to know what happened, where this baby came from. A few moments later, the doctor conducts a physical examination, and the results confirm everyone's suspicion. So, it surely doesn't look like a baby came out of there. Uh, it doesn't look like she had a baby. After a lot of back and forth with the detectives, Taylor eventually cracked and told the truth. Well, at least her version of the truth. She claimed that Reagan had told her to come over that day to use her shower since Taylor's water was supposedly off. I remember pulling up. Did she say something to you to make you mad or something? Or, or, or what happened? I don't know. Did she 
Oh, 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 Taylor tried to make it seem like Reagan's death was an accident and that she took the baby out to save her. She, uh, when she hit her head, she like she died and she was trying to save the baby. Yeah. When asked if anyone else was at the home during this time, she claimed that it was just her and Reagan. However, this would be a lie, as Reagan's three-year-old daughter was inside the house when her mother's life was tragically taken away. Detectives would later learn that Taylor had planned to kill and steal Reagan's baby for eight months, hoping that the baby would fix her and Wade's dying relationship. Three knives with Reagan's DNA would be found in her purse. So it comes out of her stomach and it's still in the sack. Did you, did you, have, to, did you have to pull the sack apart to get the baby out? Yeah, I had to pull it open and uh, turned her over and started smacking her back. Sadly, the gruesome way she had used to remove the baby caused some complications and the baby died at the hospital. In November 2022, Taylor was found guilty of capital murder and kidnapping and was given the ultimate sentence. A heavy, heavy burden feels lifted. I feel like now we can start trying to heal. Um, we don't have this over our heads. We know where she's going to be, we know where she's at, and she's taken care of. What do you think about this case? Do you believe that Taylor got the sentence she deserved? Let me know in the comment section and don't leave without giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel.